Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting being held in the Town Council Chambers. The date is Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. And I want to remind you as always that this meeting is being recorded, so please turn off all cell phones. Ellie, will you please do our roll call? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Forrest? Present. Mr. Hill? Ms. Moon? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mrs. Vasil? No. Vice Chairperson Mr. Morris? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Okay, I would like a large group from the Highcrest School to come on up front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, all of you. And thank you, Principal O'Connell. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Emmett, um, we also have a student recognition tonight from the Charles Wright School. We do indeed, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, if I could please have uh, Mr. Sitaro, Mr. Horder, and Noah Bannett come on up to the podium, please. Oh, oh. we have some additional students coming up. Come on up. Hi, Vic. Good evening, Board of Ed members. It's Hello. always a great time to come and share just awesome stuff. Many people go out of their way all the time. For example, you all tonight with that rainy weather went out of your way <laughs> to get out here and everyone that's here. Mr. Sitaro, fifth grade teacher, goes out of his way above and beyond every year. T uh, parents often choose him, desire him to lead their children. He's funny, has a sense of humor. He prepares the children for the future. <laughs> and um, yes, he goes right <laughs> along with that. And so I'll introduce everyone here, the teacher, Mr. Sotaro. Uh, Noah Bannett, who's done something really special, which Mr. Sotaro is gonna share, and in fact, um, I wrote about it in one of your board memos that mm -hmm. I just put out again. And Savannah and Oliver, who have sh followed his lead, oh. to do a little more and get out and go above and beyond. And all of this prepares them for their future. So Mr. Sitara, tell us about what you've been doing over the years. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, <clears throat> very proud of my students this year. We're off to a great start. Um, I put out a challenge at the beginning of the year for my librarian. I, we have classroom jobs, every student has one, and they keep the job for two months. And the librarian's job, among other things, you know, uh, shelving books and leveling books and uh, introducing new books to the classroom, I put the challenge to Noah, our first librarian this year, to create a librarian's challenge. And I gave him a couple of pointers as to what he might include in it. Um, I also had some past librarian challenge papers saved that he could look through, but really to make it his own. And among other things that he asked uh, his classmates to consider doing was writing a letter to an author. And he had a certain criteria, I don't remember exactly what you said, it had to be maybe a paragraph long. Um, and then if you wanted to go even further, you can write, actually send the letter to the author. He went a little bit further than that and actually um, wrote to Tommy Greenwald, a children's author, sent an email to him. I don't want to give away the whole thing, but I know you've read it already. Give away the whole okay, thing. received a response back from the author saying that he would love to send him some bookmarks with his parents' permission. Could he have his address? We shared that in class, and it, it inspired other kids in the classroom. Two of, two of the kids are here, Savannah and Oliver, who have written to authors. We've had another two that couldn't make it tonight. Um, so it's just a nice way to have the kids kind of take, take charge in the classroom. Um, also what was really nice is that from time to time Mr. Horder pops in after school usually just how are things going, any problems, do you need anything? And he, he noticed right away the librarian's bulletin board in the classroom. 
and this was early on in the school year, and what's this about? And I, I just let him know. Noah's in the process of, of doing this work, and he got excited about it, started talking to the kids, and he's been checking in, you know, anybody else doing it? And it sure, surely but surely we have more and more kids um, doing the enrichment work, the extracurricular outside of the regular classroom homework. So um, just really proud of my kids, and that's about it. Thank, Thank you. you, Vic. Thank you very much. Um, Savannah, come on up. What book have you been reading? Or what book did you choose to read and write about? I read Ghost. By? By Telter Mira. And you're going to send that letter? I'm going to send it to Scholastics in, in New York. Okay. Good job. Oliver, come on over. Who's the author that you wrote to? James Patterson. And what book did you, were you reading at the time? I Funny. I Funny. I Funny? Yep. Great. Um, thank you. And Noah coordinated all this, but today we put together an iMovie as a kind of a trailer because you don't really get to see everything. And so we want to kind of whet your appetite to come out and see these kind of things that are happening. So let's watch it. Are you ready, Jim, for the lights? I'm ready. Space bar. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Sotaro, Noah, Savannah, Oliver, thanks for making an incredible difference in being following the leader leader model that our yes, district is yeah, growing. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Glenn, on behalf of the board, thank you very much. And um, Victor, thank you. And uh, Savannah, Oliver, Noah, the board is so proud of you. Nice job. Anyone else? Okay. I don't think we can follow that. I know. <laughs> that, was that was great. great. So creative. Okay, next on tonight's agenda. Wow, not as exciting at the moment. Is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on October 10th, 2017. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay, those minutes are approved. And also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our special Board of Ed meeting, our retreat, on October 17, 2017. Are there any corrections? So, Polly, you are an expert I, at consumer relations. You. Thank you, Mr. Morris, for <laughs> pointing that out. Just okay. Take I don't make him up. <laughs> so, no correction. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So, those minutes are approved. And now, is there anyone wishing to come up to the podium to make a public comment? Please state your name and address, and may I remind you that we have a five-minute limit. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Emmett, do you have communications to share? I do. Thank you. Good evening again, everyone. Um, we're obviously still awaiting word from uh, Hartford around a budget. Um, we're awaiting word for an actual physical document uh, that we can go through to see exactly where we're at. Uh, from a perspective here in Weathersfield, um, we continue to have the budget freeze in place. 
we continue to, um, to focus on holding off on uh, positions uh, being filled. We are focused on making sure that those positions uh, that directly impact kids uh, are filled. Uh, and we've filled a grade one position, a special education position at Highcrest, and are in the process of filling a, a position over at WTA. Um, we have a uh, instructional supervisor position that we posted back in uh, the summertime that is still on hold. Uh, we have two positions at central office that we've posted, uh, one in the business office for an individual that's departed the district, um, and an another anticipated retirement in December. Um, we have posted them. We're looking to build pools, but we're going to hold off until the budget uh, comes to fruition before we fill those particular positions. Um, obviously, this is a um, frustrating time, to say the least, um, but we continue to be mindful of uh, making very prudent decisions financially, and right now we're holding our own. Um, we had a finance committee meeting earlier that Ms. Moon will speak of uh, later. Right now, we're seeing uh, an increase in expenditures around special education, and uh, we're running a little bit high on electricity at this point in time. With the budget freeze, we still continue to be favorable, so um, she'll provide details on that. I um, want to talk a little bit about the uh, family learning program. Uh, this program actually um, will have this uh, before you at an upcoming board meeting. Uh, today, I started a uh, partnership with the Varabi Vernon Regional Adult Board of Education, the Weathersfield Public Schools, and the YMCA. Um, this particular program began over at Trinity Episcopal Church this morning, and uh, it is a family learning program. It is grant funded. And it's done really through the hard work of Kim Bobbin, uh, the work of our uh, group at WEC. And this is a free program for families who speak English as a second language. And we're bringing in students as young as uh, nine months was our youngest today. Um, I will be <coughs> sending you photos uh, that Sally took today uh, when she went to the program. Uh, we were at the WEC annual meeting last night and we're talking with some parents that were starting the program today. Um, we talked with a three-year-old who was absolutely elated to be going to school today and could not wait. Uh, this is the hard work that goes on. This is outside of the work that we do you know, within our own budget, looking for uh, grant opportunities. Um, certainly our partners at Varabi as well as The Wire to be commended for the work that they're doing. So we'll have an upcoming presentation for you. Also, as the program gets uh, up and running, it's a three-day week program, we'll certainly invite board members to go out and see the program in action. Um, we're very pleased to be able to provide this outreach to our families long before they come in for kindergarten. Um, also, uh, I have some good news this evening with regard to uh, grant funding. We've received notification from the state that uh, we will be receiving funds under the Title IV grant. Uh, the Title IV grant uh, deals with uh, safe schools and um, drug-free schools. Um, we used to get this funding years back, and then we were no longer eligible. We'll be receiving a total of $10,000. Um, with that, we'll tie that into our wellness committee, and um, actually on Thursday, I'll be participating in a WebEx with Mrs. DeStoli um, with the state to talk about how that uh, funding will be dispersed. At this point in time, we have the question as to, uh, given the fact that we have schools that are Title I, whether or not this funding is tied just to the schools that are Title I or if all of our schools can access this. So um, we're certainly looking at opportunities to bring in speakers around the issue of bullying, anti-bullying, um, the social media piece that we've talked about before. So this is uh, certainly good news. I made mention a little earlier about the WEC annual meeting, had the opportunity to attend that last night. I know several of you were in attendance at that as well. And um, I must say, I was um, very, very impressed with the work that our parent panel did. Uh, Jessica, uh, Mary Kay, and uh, Nermeen did a wonderful job talking about their experiences in Wethersfield, talking about how they have worked with WEC and made Wethersfield a, a, a better place. What I was struck by last night is in each case, they talked about the fact that they moved to Wethersfield for the quality education that it provides. As your superintendent, I was really, really pleased to hear that. Um, I think in terms of moving forward, there's a lot of energy. Uh, I think that the parents are really embracing this, um, this group, and I think that it has many great things uh, to provide us. In addition to that, 
I will be showing you a, a video clip of the summer program that we did over the course of the summer over at Webb. I had mentioned it earlier, and um, the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving had done a brief video of this event that took place. Um, Chris Fox and Maria Aparo, both uh, our teachers in Wethersfield, really spearheaded this program. And it was an opportunity to get kids into a, a kindergarten setting that had not had a preschool experience. Um, there were a lot of tears, you know, both <laughs> among parents and among students. But what it did is it provided our teachers the opportunity to assess where the kids were at. So teachers getting kids in that didn't have that preschool experience actually had kind of a, a blueprint of what the child needed. Um, and it was interesting. When I went, there was one particular individual, this poor young lady, she cried every day but she stuck with it and I went to uh, Emerson Williams early last week and went into the cafeteria and had lunch with her there are no more tears uh -huh. she's comfortable she's you know acclimated very nicely to the class and she's making great progress so those are the types of things that we certainly want to see I uh, want to give you an update with regard to gym floors um, I had made mention that we've been dealing with some issues in some of our gym floors with regard to the product that goes down the polyurethane um, peeling up specifically at Silas Dean, this was a big issue, and it's been uh, an issue at our other elementary schools that have the wood floors. Um, Fred has really worked hard with the company to hold them accountable. Um, we believe that it had nothing to do with how the product was put down. We've used this product um, for years. So the uh, company that actually sells the product came out, they determined that it was a chemical imbalance um, in the product. So. Silas Dean Middle School, Webb Elementary School, Charles Wright Elementary School, Hanmer Elementary School, and Highcrest Elementary School are all going to get their gym floors completely sanded down and completely relined and new logos put down at the expense of the company, not the Wethersfield Public Schools. Um, that's certainly nice because we'll have some nice looking new gym floors that's great the only issue is that obviously from a scheduling perspective typically we would do this during the course of the summer but we feel it's important to do it now given the fact we've got basketball starting up travel basketball so mr bushy met today with the gym teachers during their professional <laughs> development to kind of lay out a schedule um, obviously this does not have any impact on emerson williams they already got their new rubberized floor and it does not impact the high school because the high school uh, floor was not done. So we're looking forward over the next month to getting all of our gym floors finished. Um, and certainly that's some good news. Uh, starting blocks. Uh, we received word from Fred that the starting blocks are due to ship on Thursday of this week. Um, we're hoping that the starting blocks come in and arrive here in Weathersfield on Friday. Um, there is talk about the potential of putting the starting blocks in on Saturday. Uh, the starting blocks will not be put in by our staff. It will be put in by the uh, vendor. This is obviously contingent upon how quickly they arrive. But um, Fred spoke with the contact uh, yesterday, and they are due to ship from the factory on Thursday. So uh, finally, I want to mention uh, I attended the Emerson Williams Town Meeting, and one of our upcoming um, staff student recognitions is going to be the Ukulele Club. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get all of the kids here. We have to work on that. But the Ukulele Club um, was actually the brainchild of the Keen After School Program. And uh, we had, I want to say, better than 30 kids up in front of the uh, whole student body on Friday playing their ukuleles that were provided by the Keene Foundation. Um, this is a, a grant-funded program, and actually Emily Caravella, our music teacher at Emerson Williams, um, is, is spearheading this and is teaching the kids. So it was great to see the kids involved. Um, certainly, and Ellen, I know you were there. You probably can imagine, like I thought, the, uh, the vibe was just great. It was excellent. So, Again, thanks to the staff at Emerson Williams. It was, certainly was an uplifting event. Um, I know some of you have been able to get to town meetings. I highly recommend them. They really um, emphasize the good that goes on in the schools and recognizes our great students. So with that, that's communications. Great. Thank you. Excuse me, can I just Any ask, comments? Yeah, mm -hmm. Just ask one question. Um, in regard to the starting blocks, um, Mr. Emmett. Yes. So will they be installed um, in t for the uh, the girls uh, while the girls season is still uh, going on or I, I'm just not sure of how long uh, 
and then the boys starts later, right? Yes, that's okay. that's correct. The, the girls at this point in time, uh, I believe, have one more away meet this week. Okay. Uh, talk with Mike Maltesi today, our athletic director. Um, obviously, we need to physically get them here first. Right. right. Uh, Mr. Bush, he's well aware of the fact that we want to make this a <clears throat> priority and get these in. Um, so it's just going to depend upon the, the logistics. The other piece that I, I want to be careful of is I need to look at what the swim schedule is, the practice right. schedule is for the girls. So we don't want to impede upon that. So that's going to take some coordination. But the intent is to try and get them in as soon as we possibly can. Well, considering how awesome they're doing and the records they're setting. Yeah, it's been a good year for them. I attended the, <laughs> yeah. the meet against Enfield and Summers and was quite impressed. Really? Quite impressed. <laughs> okay. Thank you. John? Yeah, I just had a question regarding the family learning program. Um, yes. Did we receive the funds already, or are they going to be shipped? Yeah, we've received them already, and we we're, we're, we're the fiscal agent. This is a federal grant. All right. So, nice. you know, these are the types of things. Obviously, down the road, we're going to have to look at the, the what happens when the grant funding runs out. But this, you know, again, as a program to engage members of the community, you know, one of the things that was impressive to me last night about the WEC meeting was the diversity that was in the room. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really, you know, impressive to see. Well, one of the things we, you know, did uh, talk about, you know, when we do receive funding for grants, and then we don't have uh, the ability to fund them any longer. Maybe there needs to be an, uh, an open dialogue uh, at the very beginning that, the, you know, we're under a, fu a funding right now, a federal government grant. And then, you know, there's a good possibility to keep this family learning program continuum that there may be a charge. Mm -hmm. You know, some, so that we're not, once again, caught with another program that we're, you know, we're, it's, that is very important, but now we're, you know, if there's no grant money, we're stuck funding it because it's the way of the world and the fabric of Weathersfield that we want to continue working in that vein. So I just thought maybe that dialogue needs to be brought to the surface, you know, for future. I don't know how long that yeah, grant's going to no. last. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I think that, you know, when you look at the um, work we're doing in starting the Education Foundation, and here in Weathersfield. Uh, last night at the WEC meeting, we had Richard Sussman, who um, oversees the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. That money, money from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, was the impetus to do that, that um, summer school program for the um, kindergarten. So, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. We've seen that happen before, where the grant funding you know, runs out. But I know that the charge for me was to look for grant funding and look for additional options that we have. And look, that we've talked about this with our budgets. Our budgets get tighter and tighter, and we need to look for other sources of, of revenue and other sources of, of funding to support the good work we do with our kids. So, good point. Bobby. Okay, I, Elaine? I, I, think, um, I think John's um, years of expertise has seen this happen repeatedly. We get a great idea on the table, we get it started with funds from a grant, and then it, oh, now it's your job. So I think his, his fair warning to us to look at it before it's the last day it's due uh, is, is an excellent one, John. You know, we, we always let things go and then it disappears. We don't have it anymore. Absolutely. So you've seen it happen repeatedly. So it's a good point that he brought up for all of us to think about. I, it would be helpful if we find out just what he asked. How long is this um, grant good for? Two years. You know that Two years program. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on then. So under action <laughs> items, <laughs> okay. Elaine, we're going to get you again. Please read motion 6A for us. <laughs> move that the Board of Education approve a modified teacher evaluation plan for the 2017-18 school year. Second. All right. Any discussion? I think we have people we in do. the. Thank you. Mrs. DeSoli and Mr. Burlow, come on up, please. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Eva. Hi, Matt. Uh, so, tonight we bring forward some changes to the teacher evaluation and uh, professional development support plan. Uh, the Teacher Evaluation Committee uh, meets periodically throughout the year. A subcommittee of that met over the summer um, a couple times in July to look at changes. Um, and we're bringing forward to you uh, the kind of the fruits of the labor of the conversations we've had with our teacher evaluation committee and recommended changes. 
Um, the changes presented tonight have been approved by the Connecticut State Department of Education. They uh, have to approve them before we bring them to you. We are recommending implementation of these changes this school year um, as of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Matt and I are both going to talk about some of the changes. Um, one of the first changes I want to point out to you is the legislative requirements. Um, the changes in our document now no longer tie our teacher goals, um, our educator evaluation to standardized assessments. Uh, several years ago, there was legislation around um, using assessments like uh, Smarter Balanced Assessment, CMT, uh, and other state uh, assessments, uh, tying those to the evaluation process. Um, there have been a few things that have happened. One, not getting the data back in time, um, and a change in practice. So um, we have not used that practice in Weathersfield because the data has not been available in the time constraints. Um, but we now formally have updated our plan to align with the legislative requirements. Matt? Um, another element that's changed, or we've been able to change uh, in this draft, is the number of evaluations or observations you have to do per year. And that's been one of the biggest issues that takes teachers and administrators out of the role of working just on behalf of children and kind of working in order to meet the requirements of the legislation. So one of the great things that we were able to do uh, with this is reduce that. So instead of having, um, the, we call them formals and informal observations, but instead of having a formal and an informal formal observation during the year. We just need a formal observation. We don't need to do that informal piece. That means there's a few um, less steps in which we need to go through to meet the requirements of this, and that'll help enhance the conversations we have about teaching and learning and get us focused um, on what we need to do for the kids. Matt, on, sure. on that particular statement, it mm -hmm. said you said reduce observations to just one formal, but yes. isn't that for a certain class of yes. teachers? So, yes, because that could be outside people that are listening and I happen to be at the meeting yeah. so I caught it but mm -hmm. I think you may want to clarify yeah so there, there is more than one class of teacher so that would be for someone that has had at least um, that's in their third year in Weathersfield or more and has already scored at the level of proficient that's level three um, and that that language proficient is prescribed in the legislation by the state so we have to use that language proficient or above and in the third year if you are a first or second year teacher um, either to the profession, you know, brand new teacher, or to the district, you'd go through a different set and the number of um, evaluations there hasn't changed. So that's the same as our existing plan. These changes are focused on that um, year three uh, plus. Anyone else with questions, Polly? Yeah, I, when, you know, when you talk about just a, maybe you can clarify for me, when you talk about um, only having a formal evaluation now and no informal evaluation. Um, could you just uh, um, kind of differentiate sure. between the two? Yeah, so a formal observation, the way that we've described it and the, the way uh, the legislation describes it, it's scheduled. Um, it's at least 30 minutes, and that means the evaluator's in the classroom for at least 30 minutes. It's got a pre and a post component to it, so you're discussing what you're, what you're planning and what is intended to have happen in the lesson beforehand. You do the lesson, the evaluator observes, and then afterwards you have kind of a post session. You talk about how the lesson went, you know, where the objectives met, did anything else go on? Was instruction adjusted? That's our formal definition. The informal definition was scheduled or unscheduled, was at least 10 minutes, and just required feedback. And the feedback could be an email, it could be a phone call, it could be a conversation, you know, if you did the last 10 minutes of a class as soon as the class was over. Um, not um, having that element helps uh, reduce the number of times that someone has to make sure they get out to a place to do the thing to observe this and, and kind of helps um, reduce the number of uh, disruptions we have. It reduces the paperwork, I think, also on the administrative end um, because they don't have to fill out all the forms mm -hmm. and, and, and enter the stuff into the computer. So that's the part that we, we took out as being a requirement, just again for the year three um, plus in Weathersfield. And I think that the spirit of the committee, of, of all members on the committee, was really about uh, reflection, professional growth, um, and uh, improving our craft as a, as a district. Um, so uh, we talked a lot about compliance related to legislative requirements and what we must do, um, and then also the spirit of professional growth and how we can support professional growth through conversations and support teachers, 
but reduce the compliance and the paperwork. Um, and that's really, I think, sums up the really big conversations we had and really a lot of consensus around um, how we do that was um, um, all of us in the committee had consensus around that. Yeah, thank you. That, the only, that was the only thing that I was just thinking. When, when you hear informal, I was thinking in terms of something that's just kind of you know Less, that that's yeah. that's helpful and and not you know no pressure I'm just coming into you know that type of thing that's mm -hmm. not that doesn't require a lot of paperwork and follow-up and that type of thing so I, I you know that that was the main thing I was thinking of was um, if people if you know whether it's a, an administrator or another staff person or whatever um, is not conducting something that's kind of an informal, not necessarily a gotcha type of thing, but um, that would, do you lose something Right, there? yeah, no, I, I understand that. the question, yeah. So actually one of the things that we had considered and put forward to the state was a plan that would be more like um, a, a cycle plan. So you do one formal, and again, I'm talking really about the three, um, year three plus level. You do one formal um, every three years, <clears throat> and in off years, you would do, say, three informals. But the plan we put forward was two informals and a review of practice. The state wanted it to be at least three informals, okay. but the issue kind of becomes then, if you're doing three things, now mm. you have to keep track of three things. Right, right, um, yeah. So, and, and boy, even though the teacher may not have to do as many steps for the informal, there's still gonna be meetings, there's still gonna be follow-ups, you're still doing the same amount of time because three informals formals is at least 30 minutes and one formal is at least 30 minutes um, and members of the committee have shared that having that step of being able to plan the lesson and also to know when the evaluator is coming um, is helpful and right. it, these are all set as uh, minimum guidelines too. Okay. so mm -hmm. if you wanted more or, or to change something you can do that in agreement with your administrator so oh, I don't okay. think we've lost anything okay. in doing good that. thanks okay. John I, I had two questions um, for Matt is this yeah. how is a staff receive this kind of a, of a change in the process great um so anything that is less <laughs> would be received as as a check mark yes great um so when we started it in the first year we were doing like i don't know, like six things and then we were adapt in the next years we were able to change it um this will be well received and that committee has uh members um from each level from each building on the teacher side there's administrators there and and we've talked around this issue quite a lot and this is a direction that everyone would like to move in um and it's a, it's a great example of your teachers and administrators working together to make something mm -hmm. better for everyone. So I, I, it will be well received. And so for Sally then, is this still gonna give us a rigorous enough evaluation process so we can identify any issues we have and address them? Yeah, most definitely. As Matt mentioned, this is a minimum requirement. Uh, and so it allows us to kind of, again, it's not about checking off the paperwork, but really focus on those conversations um, and there are, um, as in the past, uh, times we will add on additional observations and sometimes from the teacher's perspective. Um, you've heard me talk about photo album snapshots um, and having multiple snapshots. So sometimes teachers will say, no, you know what, that really wasn't the only lesson I want you to see. I want you to come and see another uh, lesson. The teacher might ask for another observation and or the administrator might ask. Um, so there, I think it's working through the process, but. I think the committee is focused on really how do we provide support, reflective mm -hmm. conversations, and growth. Um, move, and we definitely don't want to get into this, you know, gotcha. Uh, it's more about providing support and growth. So uh, I think, well, I know everybody on the committee feels that this change meets the needs of both teachers, administrators, um, but also adds flexibility. So from the committee, we've heard about people that you know, they prefer the formal. They like to know when people are coming, scheduled, planned. Other people prefer informals. There's, you know, people have different preferences uh, and styles, um, but this meets the legislative requirements for the minimum. But at any time, there are conversations between teachers and administrators that can look at different aspects, again, focused on growth um, to meet the needs um, of both the evaluation instrument, but also of teachers' growth. So yeah, we're very, um, um, excited about these changes and realistic because it is not uh, um, the end of August we come forward to you. Uh, we had to go back to the drawing board and make some more revisions, but confident we can make these changes. They're very simple to make during year, but also we've talked about changes we might bring forward in the future of really digging into some of the bigger things of how we can even streamline it better, given some pretty strict legislative requirements. I think in hindsight, 
Uh, if we talk about mandate relief, reducing the number of all the requirements related to teacher evaluation so that people can be creative and come together with thoughtful plans without having uh, quite so many requirements um, from the state. So okay. just keep that in Elaine? mind as you're talking to people. Um, I, from day one, I was on this committee and uh, it, you, Matt, you have done an outstanding job of steering Thank us you. to something smaller. I mean, I knew of teachers carrying milk crates in for their end yeah. of the year evaluation. Mm -hmm. And that, I was hoping, was not the purpose of the state's goal. And you worked it yeah. down. My only question is, I have two questions. Matt, if you had a formal evaluation by a teacher mm -hmm. and you did not care for what was said, mm -hmm. let's just say it was not, is there a dispute way or a, a rep? A, so you can reconcile that? There is, yes. Yeah. So there's an existing uh, process called the dispute resolution process, and that's one of the other um, small changes that we made to it. So let's say that, that in the example you give where something's stated and the, the teacher disagrees with that, there's a process that you can go through to address concerns there. And it can be used, too, if you're having an issue about the number of times uh, of observations should be scheduled or when they should be scheduled we can use that uh, the small change we made was to clarify the steps because in reviewing it it, be it became confusing the, in the old style so we, we put in a chart we put in timelines it's very clear at every step yeah, who has helpful. to do what and and um, when it has to be done and my, my second thought is and this may have been, been taken out Matt I don't really know yeah. but we have a, a circle graph that has a wedge for 10 percent of parent feedback did we get keep that in Did that we, that still exists yes so and so that's how will we gather that information um that i believe is different at each district or not each each district each school um oh, so okay. our, our school is doing some parent surveys through google forms and emailing oh, them out okay. about questions developed um on staff and it's how if you yeah. know other buildings yeah so we used to uh, do some district and school surveys we no longer remember do that those, but yeah. one of the things to remember is that yeah. the school survey data is important for uh to reflect upon but mm -hmm. parent survey data is not used to evaluate our educators i think that's one of misconceptions um, across Connecticut um, it's a goal that the entire school is embracing it might be about communication problem solving students becoming more independent um, career exploration um, again different in different buildings related to their school improvement plan um, teachers are evaluated on their action steps um, implementing that not upon uh, the feedback from um, parents um, uh, but it's the feedback from parents is very important because we use that to select other goals, um, to evaluate the work we're doing, um, and to reflect upon the work related to that goal. So, so we will, do get will, feedback. Will that teacher rating include that 10% of the parent um, feedback that I so at it's this circle yes. So legislatively, it's a 10% on a parent goal, but not based upon feedback from parents. It's the strategic, it's the steps they've outlined what they're going to do related to that goal, a shared goal across the entire school. And that's one of the legislative requirements. So that's no change to that. Okay. I think I got it. It's very difficult. You, Matthew, yeah. you are yeah. beyond helpful with well, me. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, well, I, I need to say I applaud you because it's been two years and I still miss the children very much. I miss teaching very much, but I don't miss that state evaluation yeah. tool at all. I found it very cumbersome. Um, I don't think at, when it was first implemented that allowed teachers to really teach and get feedback. It was kind of a, a paper game. Mm -hmm. And your simplifying of it is, is fabulous. I went to one of your meetings and um, the work was well done. Well, thank, thank you. you. Matt? Just uh, one question on something I was, I was listening to you guys about. Um, are we treating teachers in different schools, maybe treating is not the right word, are we evaluating teachers in different schools possibly differently if we're using different types of process for, I guess it was the parent feedback section of the, of the thing? Um, not really. So it, the questions that may be asked at, a, at one school may be different than another. But the way the teacher is graded is based on the plan the teacher creates. Right? So for example, at the middle school, we're working on uh, helping uh, kids with problem solving skills. How do you solve the problem yourself? And one of the examples I've used in my classes is there's a, a problem solving strategy kids use all the time, and it's called Ask the Teacher. But there's many other strategies that you can use. <laughs> so I, I asked them, before you ask me, and I'll, I'll absolutely help you, what else could you do? Right? So that's the strategy I'm helping with. I'm, I made a plan of how I'm going to do that. My evaluation is based on the plan that I do. So even if, if the focus area changes, I get to make my own plan, and then I get evaluated on did I do my plan. 
So it, it won't really change how the teacher is evaluated. Mm -hmm. so, but I heard that there was maybe a different process that you're using at different schools. Is that like is that different for across elementary schools? You said at different schools we're going to be doing it in a different way. So and everybody, I didn't know if that was like a level thing, oh, or oh, is, is like Charles Wright going to be doing it different than high Crest or Emerson Williams, or is that like you know the high school is different cohort of students obviously than yeah. the elementary school does, so we have to do the evaluation differently. And I, I didn't understand what the difference was. Okay, and I think um, if you're referring to the, like the comment I made about the Google form, the, the survey, yeah. the survey instrument may be different at schools, and I can't speak to that because I only know the survey instrument at my school and that it's a Google form, but that you can co collect parent feedback through a variety of methods. So uh, at the middle school, it's the survey. Mm -hmm. In other buildings, it may be different. So that method may be different, but regardless of the method, you're still evaluated on you know, the teacher-created plan. Did, did I make a plan? Did I do my plan? Are we planning on having a different method at different schools? And, so, if, and if so, why? And if not, okay. We're not. Yeah, so uh, we no longer do district surveys. So um, in the plan, there are options. Again, the plan, the options come from the state recommendations. It could be a survey. It could be a focus group. It could, there's a lot of different ways to collect that anecdotal feedback. Um, it does not have to be a survey. Often surveys are a tool that we might use, um, but it could be a focus group. So what, so, are, what are we planning to do? Um, there is up to each individual school to develop that plan based upon uh, current feedback from parents um, and implement that plan at its school level. The evaluation process, though, is identified in the plan and has some um, criteria across schools. So yes, different schools and different teachers. Um, so Matt shared his strategy. The math teacher might be doing something different than the PE teacher uh, and the language arts teacher. So it's individualized related to the individual teacher, but around a core goal at a school. So um, it is school-based feedback um, and how they collect that from parents. OK. And um, were there any, uh, we heard about a lot of the positives, obviously, which all sound great. Yeah. Uh, but were there any concerns by the teachers that maybe didn't, or were there any concerns, and were there any concerns by the administration that maybe didn't get filtered through with this particular version? Um, I don't think with this version. I mean, most of the concerns, um, I think Ms. Granato mentioned, you know, the state is pretty prescriptive with its legislation. So even with the changes we've made, we're guided largely by what has to be done to be legally compliant. Um, in terms of, of concerns, if there was a way to address that through this process, great. There's not, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and I think this represents our best step forward with what we are able to do, at least mm -hmm. from the teacher's side. So. Yeah, no, I would totally agree. Yeah. It was a massive undertaking. Yeah. Thank you I for mean, your time. You, you remember those meetings, oh, don't no, you, Elaine? Yes, from yeah. 2011 <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All set? Okay, any further discussion on it? All right, thank you. So, seeing none, let's have a vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? So motion 6A passes. All right, at tonight's meeting, we do have a report on our strategic plan draft from the co-chairs, John Cassio and myself, and also from Mr. Emmett. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very pleased to be working with my fellow board members and the school board administrator on this administration on a steering committee for the strategic plan for the Wethersfield school system. Um, a strategic plan, or more accurately, in our case, a skinny strategic plan, is a document that lists deliberate choices that we are making to focus all of our efforts in the years ahead. In some cases, this will mean staying the course to sustain successes already in place, and in other instances, we are defining new areas of investment and development to achieve our goals. Of course, this strategic plan is intended to guide us and is not written in stone. It will be a living document and we will continually be measuring it in terms of reality and effectiveness. The Weathersfield Public School strategic plan also includes our vision and mission statement. These will be definitions of where we intend to be and how will we get there. We focus on answering these questions. How do we educate? What kind of learners do we create? And why do we approach education the way we do? The, way we do? the strategic plan is gonna be set up with goals, which are our priority areas for growth that focus the energy and skills of the school district toward realizing our collective vision. 
strategies, which are specific approaches to the efforts that are necessary to realize the goals and achieve desired results, and the actions, which are the steps people and other resources that are required to execute a specific strategy. So I hope when the time comes and everyone reads the draft, that's both the staff and the public, that will provide you with a clear sense of our mission, our values, and belief that all of our students deserve a world-class education that will prepare them for success in college, career, and life. And now I'm going to hand it over to John, who's going to tell us how we hope to get it out to you. Thank you, Bobby. Um, yes, that was the, how do we put it together? How do we get it out there? And so the Communications Committee of the Board of Education came together at the high school uh, before school got out, and we met with the committee as well as uh, a group of students and the instructor. And um, what I have to say is this, after we met, the kids were very excited. So Bobby and myself and the kids got together this past summer to create this project. And I've got some, uh, I think, some key words. Um, these students are very passionate about what they were doing. They're committed. They are very creative. They're learning. And most of all, they're very respectful to the project and how we are going forward. They were uh, Danielle Colblath, Christina Yarnaros, Aaron Robles, and our own Justin Bianchi. And uh, <clears throat> so with that, uh, we met with the high school uh, students and their advisor, Sue Coco, and uh, the Eagle, Blue Eagle Productions. Uh, the students were excited because they thought it would be a quick project. <laughs> <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> and uh, they welcomed the opportunity, and they said, yeah, we can't wait. Well, guess what? The video is almost done. <laughs> and it's, uh, our, our goal is to uh, have it uh, completed this month, and as Bobby mentioned, get it out and, uh, for our next steps. One of the things that we should be very proud of is that this uh, project is just the beginning uh, with the communications committee. Um, get the word out. This Board of Ed uh, has done so many remarkable things, but we don't tell people what we're doing. And this is a way that we can start communicating and also uh, get collaboration with students within our high school uh, to get the word out. These are their future dreams and future professions that they want to do when they grow uh, out of the high school uh, level. It's a hidden gem that we have within the school. The students are sponges. They are very uh, respectful, but they do speak their mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was uh, our first time being on camera, and uh, in a sense that we had monitors and look here, turn right, don't look at each other, don't do that. And so it was, uh, it was intense, but it was a learning process for everyone. Uh, we discussed the timeline. Most importantly, we asked them, um, how do they feel about the project? Is this something they would like to put their name to and be a part of the uh, broadcasting? So when we started talking like that, we discussed uh, customer service. We discussed the options of making sure that they were uh, happy with what they achieved, but also the customer achieved. So that was uh, truly, I believe, a learning process for the students. And um, when they do get into the career and they have to go into a workforce, you know, they have to please the customer. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be paid for it. Now they're getting a learning environment, uh, and some are doing independent studies. So having said that, I truly believe these students earn their wings and they've done a great job and uh, we should be very proud of them. And it was interesting at the last session we met, uh, their instructor, Sue Coco, uh, is remarkable. She guides them, she doesn't tell them it, what to do, but gives, encourages them, well, what about this and what about that? And there's a give and take and then finally, there's a happy medium of where we go with the next step. So I think it was, uh, it wasn't easy, but it was fun. 
And I can't thank you enough at the Wethersfield High School, the students and staff for everything. And uh, it'll be a continuum that I think the Board of Ed is going mm -hmm. to be working with. So we have uh, another, uh, I think, feather with the Eagle Productions. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it took a while for everyone yeah, to get it. Yeah, we got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was good and I'm excited. So uh, bear with us and uh, our next uh, step will be our superintendent with his comments. Now, how do I follow this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I have to say that this process, you know, in education, um, many times we get to the point where we want it done yesterday and it has to be done quickly. Um, this is a process that has taken time and I have to applaud this board and I know as I sit here among you tonight, um, this is our last regularly scheduled meeting before the election and I could not be more proud of the work that has gone on. Um, in terms of the goals, our goals in, in draft form at this point in time, talk about student achievement. Talk about educator development and accountability. They talk about family and community engagement. They talk about management, operations, and finance. They talk about ensuring a safe and positive school environment that promotes a results-based culture. It talks about plan management, ensuring ongoing review, development, and measurement of the plan's goals, strategies, and actions. You are laying the groundwork and the foundation for the work of future boards, and that's critically important. One of the things that we did last week, we had the uh, retreat where we had Lyle Kurtman, our consultant, come in and work with us on the process of revamping, not revamping per se, but really reviewing this strategic plan, looking at the realities of our budget or lack thereof, and moving forward in terms of how we prioritize this, this process and what we hone in on. One of the key components in terms of our next steps is to make sure that we get this information out to our stakeholders. First and foremost, this information needs to get out to our teachers, our custodians, our secretaries in Paris, our lunch aides, all of our, our folks in the buildings for their feedback. And when we send this document out, the idea is not just give me some feedback, because what tends to happen is you don't get any. Um, so we need, as a steering committee, to work to develop a framework of, of questioning that we're looking for from our um, teachers from our support staff members to ensure that they have feedback and are able to provide us with their insight on this. So the next step for us is as the steering committee to come together, take into account all of the priorities that you brought forward at the retreat last week and hone in on the plan and get this out to teachers and support staff. At that point in time, we take into account exactly what John and Bobby have done and that's to use the um, Blue Eagle Productions. I happen to see it. I know it's been a work in progress. I've been very impressed with what, what it has to say. Because once we get it out and we get the feedback from our staff, it needs to get out into the community. And it needs to be part of um, a way we do business. John mentioned customer service. One of the things that we talked about during our administrative group last week, last Tuesday before the retreat, was the piece on customer service. How we interact with parents and members of the community. How we network. How we deal with having to say no, the answer is not always going to be yes. But how do we go about doing it in a manner that is professional and gets the message across? Um, I'm proud of where we're going. This is a very clear framework of, of what we're doing. And I think you saw tonight with, from communications to what you saw with staff student recognition, our Pledge of Allegiance. We value our kids. We value the educational system in our community. So I see this as a really strong framework in terms of moving forward. So the idea here is to meet with Lyle via phone conference um, within the week to talk further about this, again, taking into account, it's interesting, each of you had your own ideas of what was the priority. So we need to summarize that and we need to be able to prioritize these. So for example, some of the things that we talked about, some of the actions within the plan, we've talked about really being budget dependent and maybe not being able to go forward with those up, up front or kind of honing in and making sure that this plan is something that works. The key piece here is making sure that this is a plan that does not sit on the shelf such as the case with our school improvement plans. Those school improvement plans are living, breathing documents. Our administrators utilize them for their evaluations. Our teachers are clear with regard, you heard Matt tonight talk about problem solving. There you go. 
student achievement, problem solving, and civics. Those are the main three tenants that we're focusing on in the district. So um, I'm excited to see where we're headed. And um, again, I, we're looking to get this document out for public consumption very shortly. Thank you, any questions? Kevin? Uh, thank you, and uh, I'd like to thank you, Madam Chair, and Mr. Cassio for kind of taking this initiative on uh, working with uh, Ms. Coco and the brave students <laughs> that you had to, uh, had to deal with you for the months and months. No, but, but thank you very much. I mean, one of the challenges we've been talking about through these last few years is how do we amplify the message of uh, Weatherstill Public Schools and get it out to the community, working with students and staff and working in our state-of-the-art high school and to show, we're gonna be able to show our, our community what it has to offer and what better way to do it than with a strategic plan looking forward to how we bring the school system uh, from where we are now and move it into the future. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hi. Elaine? Uh, um, seems like I got a lot to say tonight. Um, years ago, we didn't go to this detail to create a vision for our school system, but we all had a little um, document sent to us to put in our classrooms. And I would really think that if, if the board members agree that some kind of a poster of that piece that you have sent us, Bobby and John, the big piece, was in each building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, parents go in to see a game. That, that They're not here. They don't have time for this looking it up online sometimes. A poster in each building would be a nice way to, to keep it out there for, you know, for people to see, Mike. You know, it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. you know, it yep. depends on Thank everybody you. agrees mm -hmm. or not. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you. Well, one of the pieces to this is that it is a skinny plan, and we uh, don't mean that lightly. We mean that it's going to be pinpointed to things that we really want to focus on, and the whole system will know what it needs to focus on. And um, I was saying recently that there have been years in the past where there's so many focuses that you really don't concentrate. And mm -hmm. this is a great way to let this thing mature into what our system will be. So we'll keep pushing it. All right, so for meetings held. So our school projects building committee, Mr. Emmett? I, I didn't attend that. I was sitting right here next to you for a board okay. meeting, so nothing uh, to report. Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. But we know where you were. It's our cool. special board of education meeting, um, our retreat, Kevin? Yes, uh, thank you, as Mr. Emmett, uh, uh, alluded to uh, Lyle Kirkman came and kind of facilitated a, meet a meeting with the, the board and the administration uh, where we had a presentation on the leader leader model and how we can kind of empower uh, teachers and staff and we well we had a great example of it today with uh, Mr. Sitaro's class um, and something we've experienced I mean, earlier last year with um, Ann Emerson Williams for the look for the good campaign that was a tremendous success that I know is going to be replicated this year um, and like Mr. Emmett said, we went over the strategic plan, um, our kind of our customer service model that we're trying to roll out this year. Uh, and we individually talked about next steps and what, you know, what each board member kind of values within the plan that we'd like to see carried out uh, and continued into uh, uh, boards in the future. Um, but it was, a, it was a great meeting and it was kind of eye-opening to see, as Mr. Emmett alluded to, where we all have kind of different priorities, but we all fit into the same framework. Thank you. Any discussion on our retreat? Any other comments? Okay. Um, CREC, which is the Capital Region Education Council, had its meet, uh, meeting on October 18th, and I was unable to attend and disappointed because the networking with 35 other surrounding towns is always very informative. Their next council meeting is November 15th. Um, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, which was their annual meeting last night. Matthew? Well, um, we've spoken a lot about this already. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Superintendent. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, there's no reason to apologize. You did a fantastic job. Um, the annual meeting, I think, was really a celebration to um, open the Family Learning Program or the Early Learning Center, as I'm kind of saying it in my head. Um, and I, I guess as this is sort of one of my last meetings on this particular board, um, I just wanted to, I guess I just wanted to elaborate on holistically what WEC is and whoever's sort of going to replace me as a liaison. 
And I just wanted to leave this board with one thing, because there certainly will be our four-year members continuing. I'm sure that some of the people that are still on here will be reelected and on this board. But if you can remember one thing, and that is that children do not start learning when they enter kindergarten. They start learning three, four, three years before that. And if you look at any kindergarten class, you can see that there are children that are not ready to climb the mountain for the next 13 years, and there are children that are clearly ready to climb the mountain for the next mm -hmm. 13 years. And that discrepancy, I have a child in kinder, my kindergarten class, and I'm sure all the educators that are in early childhood education and the numbers play it out. The, the way in which kids enter and their abilities are, is a direct correlation to our test scores that you will see in third grade. Um, and their ability, the ability for children to have a strong early childhood education in whatever form it is, even if it's homeschooling, if the parent has that, there are, we have set a seed with the little money that we set aside over the last two years, the little money that the town set aside, and they should be congratulated for that because it was a shared grant. And look what this seed has created. We had, if you remember, we had the Weathersfield Family Resource Center website now, so all Weathersfield <coughs> families can get all the resources that they need in a singular place for early childhood and babysitting and daycare and extracurricular, and if your child's having a, a development problem, where to go for that. Um, we have the, um, uh, we now have the Community Leadership School and the Early Learning Center, and that was because the Hartford Foundation and, the, and WEC got together to get a grant to pay for all this. And now we've got these two classrooms that I think hold up to 20 or 30 or 40 individuals, where now we're gonna bring in families that are, are set up in, to not have the English skills for their children to enter school and many times the parents don't have the English skills to teach their children how to enter school with those good skills. And now we're going to bring in the parents as a community. We're gonna bring in all of the, our community resources. I'm sure there's gonna be retired teachers that are gonna be volunteering. The kids are gonna be in there at an early age. You heard nine months because that's where it's going to start. Um, but of course there's two year olds and three year olds so that our, our <coughs> most, uh, are the segment of our population that would normally had come in and not be ready to make that climb um, for whatever reason now is going to be able to make that start that's that that journey earlier and it's going to pay off in the future so as we move forward and I'm not going to be sitting in this seat please remember that those little seeds that we planted are growing now and that we continue to support the expansion of these types of resources so our whole community can come together to then have great test scores for this Board of Education come three years from now and four years from now. And, um, and that that is so very important. So that was, that was essentially, I think, a lot of the gist of what was talked about at the annual meeting about the success that we're having, about the seed that was planted, about the tree that's growing, and, um, and about where Weathersfield's going in early childhood education. Thank you, Matthew. Anyone else on that? Polly? So it, are those like feathers on the blue eagle? Yes. So you you have just, your I'm metaphor sorry. on that side of the dais, and we have ours. Sorry. <laughs> just, I no, couldn't no, help it. Seed feathers, yeah, we got right, it. Right, right. But Leaves. you know, Matthew, you mentioned that um, oh, you know, out of this comes good test scores, but also to be able to look at a kindergartner who understands what's going on is really priceless, too. That's another piece to it this. It comes with the emotional mm -hmm. development. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole, the whole you're treating the whole commute, the whole family, mm -hmm. the whole family unit. I agree. Oh, excuse me. Did I cut you off? Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Polly. It wasn't just one joke. No, I have no more. <laughs> I have another one. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole time. Right? <laughs> He's here all night. Polly <laughs> <That's right. laughs> There you go. Um, no, one of the, and I know we've, um, it, we've had a lot of uh, discussion about this, but I just wanted to follow up that one of their, the, uh, one of the most, um, uh, fantastic things that I thought about the program last night was the fa was the parent panel mm -hmm. and the fact that we had three different um, people who had three different stories as to how they came into Weathersfield um, how and uh, how they came to Weathersfield and how they um, I, the fact as mr. Emmett pointed out the fact that our 
they, they wanted to expose their children to our education process, which first of all made me very proud. Um, but also, and as a, as a, um, as a citizen of the fact that, uh, that, I was very proud of the fact that every single one of them said how much they loved Weathersfield, they love Weathersfield, and, um, and so it's seeing three people from completely three different backgrounds and with different stories and with the whole idea that it starts with a cup of coffee and they all just sit down together and exchange ideas, I think is, is very exciting. But I also wanted to mention the fact that, there, that um, it, as each one of them pointed out, they came, from, they came as young parents to, uh, to Weathersfield, didn't really know anybody. And one of the things that impressed me was the fact that uh, um, there were other. There were some who were connected, who became connected with the school system and with the with each other through the library and through the staff uh, in the um, in the uh, children's department of the library. And I spent a lot of years on the on the. Um, on the library board, as we know, I'm an expert in <laughs> customer service. <laughs> but <laughs> and now an expert in the yeah, yeah, it's right yeah, the that's right, and it's in writing. Um, <laughs> but the point was that that I, that the, the, this um, library, the, the staff, the boards of directors, and um, has worked very hard with their community connection and being um, being of service to people, basically from birth through. Um, senior citizen and the fact that um, there are people in the, the, and staff in that library who um, were able to connect with people who did not had just moved into town I thought was um, that made me very happy because we do work on a lot of programs with the library but it's nice to know that the staff is um, is tuned into and also supportive of the um, uh, of this program and so it I think the community outreach here and the community support is a really important thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that was my addition. Thank you. No more jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. And so we'll go on to the okay. Finance and Information Management Committee. But Polly, you get to keep going. Oh gosh. And I've got jokes no, more, no, no more jokes. jokes. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, well, when we talk about the state budget, that was one of the items yeah. on there that <laughs> we're not laughing. No. Um, but at any rate, we um, uh, we did have a conversation about the um, about the upcoming or, or the present budget, um, and um, I think Mr. Uh, Emmett hit on some of the highlights. Um, we are uh, basically the the um, what we do find is that. Uh, uh, at this particular point, our numbers are really driven by uh, the fact that we had some uh, new outplacements uh, in this, uh, this particular month, and also the fact that uh, our utility costs were high, specifically at the, or primarily at the high school. Um, again, keeping in, in mind that this is the end of the month, uh, these are the end of the month uh, numbers and they don't reflect the entire year but at this particular um, point with uh, the fortunately the budget freeze um, I think will give us um, uh, will give us some support in the fact that as you can see there are costs that um, that have cropped up and we are concerned about um, where do we the, the uh, special ed numbers are always uh, fluid um, we've had we had eight new outplacements um, this month, and we could have some. We could have more, or we could have um, some people come back. So that is, and the transportation that goes with it. Um, so that's where we are at this point. Uh, and we also discussed transportation. The um, the school year has started out with some bumps in the. Um, uh, with autumn as far as the transportation is concerned but um, the um, uh, and I'm not sure of his last name Sal who is the owner has come in he's met and he's been uh, very cooperative with uh, working out any of the new um, the you know the new school schedule bumps uh, but from what I do understand the transportation as far as the field trips and the athletics has gone pretty well, and those are two things that 
were a, a, a serious problem in the past. So that's our report tonight. Oh, Polly, we're, um, I received the sheet as I sat here this morning, I mean this afternoon from Matt, and where on this sheet, this summary, does it show us the eight outplacement, the cost for, right. oops, oh, I forgot to turn it H2. <laughs> Yeah, that comes out of other purchase services. Thank you. Yes. Diane? I think Kevin was first. Oh. Oh. Kevin? Uh, the potential savings of the $542,000, is that solely from the budget freeze? Or if so, what what else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's uh, money saved from the budget freeze. OK. Yes. Yeah. Diane? Diane? Um, one of the other things that we discussed, um, and this came up during our programs and services um, meeting this past spring when we were talking about the special ed programs, was looking into the regionalization of um, special ed services. And um, we mentioned with the new board possibly approaching some of the other area town boards and getting together and kind of brainstorming what we can do so we don't see these high um, special ed costs were kind of hold, held at the um, held the gun to our head as far as the CREC, the expense of the CREC and some of the other house placement services. So if we look at creating our own um, in-house regional type of thing, we, we may be able to save money. Also, um, this would be a new concept and the regionalization is really something that the legislature is has been focusing on for years now. Um, so now the time might be right to, um, to look at that and be in the forefront of that. Yep, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on our finances? John? Yeah, just one comment. The, uh, the $500,000 in savings is, is a nice number, and it sounds like we're saving a real lot of stuff, but it's because we're not buying things that we do need. Correct. And it may be something that we get haunted by later because one of those things is deferred maintenance. We all mm -hmm. know that if you defer maintenance, it costs twice as much when you have to do it and you always have to do it. And it's the supplies and things that we're not buying. It's textbooks we're not buying. So it's, ne it's necessary right now as a prudent planning mechanism, but it's not real savings that we're just gonna not have to pay for mm -hmm. it. We're gonna have to pay for it somehow. And it, it, that does Alan? also that does also include the um, the unfilled positions. Correct. That, that it we does. Have. So mm -hmm. um, that, that's a and that's a big uh, uh, that's a big factor. Mm -hmm. So Matthew, I just wanted to s support Ms. Fitzpatrick or Diane uh, mm -hmm. Diane's thoughts on uh, the possible regionalization and the reduction of the cost performing the same service but reducing the cost to supply that service. Uh, to our students for in, in housing but the secondary idea which has been tossed around which i do think should be uh, brought up at the same in the same breath is uh, mr morris's idea of being able to bill out the non-educational uh, the non-educational portion of those services basically a lot of the medical to private health if possible so um, that again that would not only would we, re <coughs> we would be reducing the cost but we'd also be able to offset some of our, possibly offset some of our responsibility in that manner. So it could be something good to look at since this is such a large portion and volatile portion of our budget mm. in order to, to bring, rein in some of those costs. And I think those are two good ideas to look into. How they pan out will be another day, but certainly I think worth the effort. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Okay, anyone else? All right, so we'll go on to meeting scheduled. We have School Projects Building Committee um, on November 6th. Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, WEC, is on November 13th at 4.30. Um, so is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay. All right, are there any board comments? John? Yeah, I wanted to uh, just, I wanted to do this in the comments when uh, superintendent basically was speaking. It had to do with uh, Fred following through on the gym floors while we were lucky mm. that we were able to hold the uh, vendor um, 
you know, liable for that. And uh, I just wanted to publicly thank Fred for staying on top of it and allowing us the ability to get that problem resolved. And you know, you know, chemical product uh, I think is important and. You know, it would have been a, a pretty big penny for us as a district to take care of if the vendors didn't come forward. Mm -hmm. So, all right, that was it. Polly? Um, I, I just wanted to mention, as, as the people may be aware, uh, we have a, um, an election coming up the beginning of uh, November. And one of the things that the, um, the WSPC uh, has done and they've uh, sponsored this uh, in the past is they will be sponsoring a uh, candidate forum for all Board of Ed candidates um, on November 1st in at the uh, at Webb and um, they have um, uh, they've asked uh, Leslie Civitello who uh, works for the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, to to moderate and um, the, one of the one of the things that they are in the process, the WSPC is in the process of doing now, is uh, getting uh, input from the um, from parents and from students uh, as far as um, questions that they would like to see board candidates uh, answer. And um, this, in the past, has been a terrific um, has really been a terrific opportunity, I think, for for the public and for also uh, obviously any candidates too. But um, so I would uh, encourage anyone who is interested in, in, uh, in this because we will have a completely different board uh, the next time. And uh, just on that note, I, I just wanted to um, say that um, I think I'm proud of the fact that we've that we have our strategic plan and process that, that um, there are uh, people in the community and the board who are working on a foundation to look for other ways of, um, uh, of providing uh, programs and services to the educational system. And I think we should all be very proud of ourselves because for two years I think we've done a, we've come together as a really good group of people. And mm -hmm. um, we haven't had a whole lot of major drama and I, Personally, I'm very happy to have uh, to serve with everybody. So I just wanted to mention that. Well, thanks, Polly. Thank you. Anyone else with comments? I did um, want to mention um, a meeting I went to on Thursday, October 19th. Um, I attended the Keen on Kids Coalition meeting. This group, this coalition, is a collaboration of the Keene Foundation, Park and Rec, Social and Youth Services, YMCA, our library, and the Board of Ed. Um, the agenda included a review of our current after-school programs, and Caroline Fazina had come and she had spoken of them. And this is for elementary and middle schoolers, and of course, the other Keene programs, which are numerous. There was also discussion of the highly successful and profitable Cove Carnival. This year's monies will also be distributed to the fire and police department for their work with our town's young people. And this Keen for Kids, it continues to be a very successful coalition set to help our youngest citizens by providing a safe, fun environment for them to participate in athletics, academics, and other events. And I need to say it, thank you, fairy godmother Judy Keen. It is just a delight to work with her. Um, and before I turn it over to Justin on life at the high school, I too just want to say this is our last time together for a span of time, for a whole meeting. Um, I hope everybody goes out to vote on Tuesday, November 7th. Um, it's very important. It's your um, democratic right to vote. Um, and so we all won't be here next time. Um, but it has been one of the honors of my life to be chair of this board. Um, and to work with you people has just been an experience of a lifetime. So thank you all. Thank you. OK, so now Justin, life at the high school. Thank you, Mrs. Donato. I was very pleased to assist with the board along with a few other students to create the strategic plan video for the district and in the future assist Blue Eagle Productions with their new community channel. Mm -hmm. The fall, fall sports season is beginning to come to an end with many teams recently holding their senior nights. 
All WHS students will be attending a presentation on the dangers and implications of misusing social media this Friday. Today and tomorrow were and is minimum school days for students at the high school with professional development being held in the afternoon for teacher, teachers and faculty. Students from the Future Educators Club will be traveling to, I believe, Charles Wright next Friday to practice teaching lessons to students. Oh, good. And WHS Drama Club's fall production of The Shutter Season will also be next weekend, Friday, November 3rd, and Saturday the 4th at 7.30, oh, excuse me, 7.30 p.m. in the high school auditorium. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for students and seniors. And I also want to wish all of the Board of Ed and Town Council members good luck in their elections. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Okay, so no one else? May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So this meeting is adjourned. Thank you and good night.